we were lucky enough to have the chance to give a talk at the recent Adventure Overland show at Stratford-upon-Avon, talking about ways to keep connected when on the road. So this video is slightly different to our normal punchy short videos as it covers a wide topic and has lots of information, so therefore it's quite long. We shared all the solutions that we have and also supplemented by our friends from Soulwise with some great additional Teltonica routers and pointing antennas. We'll run through all of these in brief at the end of the video. We're also really happy that we can share 10% discount off anything from soulwise.co.uk simply by entering Explorevan in the discount code at the checkout. Um, thank you for coming. I hope you're having a great weekend. Being connected whilst on the road is something that people sometimes try to get away from. That's why they go on the road. Um, but for some people, it's really important. Um, sometimes it's for work. Sometimes it's for keeping in touch with loved ones, um, keeping up on social media, or just watching telly. Um, today, we're going to talk about how different ways of keeping in touch, keeping in connected. Um, I um, will talk about the things that I've used, things that um, you can use differently, and things you can how to do better with what you've got already. Um, so hopefully we'll cover lots of stuff. Very quick disclaimer. Everything I tell you today is just my opinion. What you pick for your van is your choice. Um, I am videoing as well, but if that means you can go back onto my channel and watch this show again if there's anything you want to see. Um, but just let me know if you don't want to be in the video and I will take it out. Um, so a question for you guys first. Who's already got some type of internet in their van or... How they go? Right. Keep your hands up if that's a phone hotspot. If you just hotspot off your normal phone. Um, if you've got simple MiFi, something like this that you just pop a separate SIM in. Okay, cool. Um, a household router, um, which for some reason I haven't got with me. Um, we'll see a picture of it in a bit. Um, so like from three or Vodafone that you'd put external antennas on. No. Okay. Um, a motone specific kit, so like something from MaxView or Avtech. No. Or an industrial router. Anyone gone that far? No. Okay. So lots of Wi-Fi's, lots of hotspots. So lots of potential there, but also lots of ways you can you can maybe get those to perform better from what you've got. So the question we get asked the most is, how do I get the best Wi-Fi? How do I get the best internet? What's the best choice for me? Um, and that is different for everybody. And, and, and the things that make it different are the things that you can see there at the bottom. So how are you going to use it? How often are you going to use it? Is it going to be three, day, three weeks of the year and then never again until next summer and then you're going to use it again for three weeks? Or is it going to be constant? Um, how important is it? Is it critical? Is it that you're going to be using it for work every day? Or is it just if you can't get it, you're going to miss an episode of a million pound motorhomes? Um, how fast is something that's, for me, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a strange one. So over the last three years, internet mobile has got really fast. In my opinion, unnecessarily fast. Um, so, so quite a lot of advice comes in, of, oh, get 5G, get Starlink, and we'll talk a little bit about Starlink later, uh, that will give you 200 megabits per second. I don't need that. I, you know, I, I work from the van. The most I need is 20. And I would much rather have something that would give me 20 megabits consistently than something that will occasionally, when I'm somewhere near the town, give me 200 megabits per second, but then not work when I'm in the wild. Um, so it's difference for different people. Location, similarly, if you're always in a town, one solution might be better for you than another. Configurability, something we'll talk quite a bit about later on, um, particularly when we talk about the industrial routers. So some people want something they can just plug straight in and it's going to work and it'll work to a reasonable level. Everything that you can buy will work okay. Um, some people want to play with it, mainly me, so something like this with a lot of antenna connections on it and, and the ability to, to tune it so you can get the absolute maximum of what, out of what signals you can get is for some people. These industrial routers also have basic modes, so you can just forget all that and it'll operate in the same way as this. Um, so you, you get to play with them a little bit if you want to. Robustness, so because I haven't got the household router with me, I can't compare the two, but something like you get from 3 or from Vodafone or, or from EE, uh, they're designed for going on your windowsill at home, not necessarily for being shaken around in the van. Uh, it doesn't mean they're going to break necessarily, um, but when it comes down to this importance and criticality question, if something is really critical to you, the last thing you want is for that to break while you're out, whereas these that are designed for in ambulances, police cars, helicopters, 
are much more robust and can take a lot more shaking up and down. Um, I think I, I saw this one in a rally car, and you, know, you can imagine the uh, abuse it gets in there. Um, Portability is another one. So these ones, battery powered. If you want to take them away with you, you can pop in your pocket. You can go and use it in your hotel room. You can go use them when you go on holiday. Um, these ones you're not going to be doing that with because these are going to be connected to 12 volts all the time. Um, and then budget, finally. You know, every, everyone has a budget. How much do you want to spend on, on your internet connection? And again, that generally comes down to that importance question as well and how critical it is. So, another question for you guys. Your main reasons for using, for wanting to use the internet. Uh, browsing social media. Is anyone going to admit it? <laughs> uh, keeping in touch with family, so being able to FaceTime, yeah. Uh, TV, radio, being able to stream, yeah. Uh, anyone either working on the road now or wanting to be able to work on the road, yeah. Cool, we've got a good wide base and that is why no one can answer the question, what is the best Wi-Fi for my van? So, my internet is rubbish, is another question that we get. How do I make it better? Uh, this bit is going to get a bit techy. I'll, I'll prepare you for that. But once we're through it, we're on to a better bit, which we'll talk about the actual devices. Um, but hopefully, I can get you through it without falling asleep. So, um, the, the, the amount of internet you end up with at your laptop or, or at your tablet is affected all the way through the delivery chain of, of that internet process. The first thing is the network. So I'm, I'm sure we all know Vodafone O2, E and 3 in the UK, um, as well as a multitude of mobile virtual network operators. So that's the likes of GIFGAF on O2, Smarty on 3, um, TalkTalk, I think, at E, Voxy on Vodafone, and lots of others. But they all use those four core networks. Within those networks, the biggest impact is their coverage. Um, that's the same map for each of the networks in the same area of the country. And um, as you can see, they've all got gaps. No network is perfect. There isn't, there isn't one network. If it was, they would be making millions. Um, and I can guarantee you I can find you somewhere in the country where one of those networks is better than all the others. Um, so it's not an easy question of what, what is best. So the, and I'll, when I come to top tips at the end, I'll probably repeat myself here, but the best thing to do is to get one of the MVNOs because you can get a 30, set, 30 day SIM for any of the four networks from them with a, with a you know 10 gigabytes for about six pounds. Get all four, go out, try them, see which works best in the areas that you're in. It's the only way that you'll be able to tell is the best one. Um, for example, Central Scotland and the Highlands EE is very good. Um, Norfolk and West Wales, three are very good. Three, three's band plan, um, and we'll talk about bands next. Um, so you can see three have a very wide band plan. Uh, they also have another bit over here that's not actually on this one at 700 megahertz. Um, and the way bands work, each of those networks have a bit of a, bits of the spectrum, uh, and, and they run different generations, which you'll have heard of the 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. Um, three don't do 2G for starters, so, so they don't do that first basic generation, but we don't really care about that anymore. It's so slow, it's not worth worrying about. That's what we're using here. Um, the frequency does matter. So, so the frequencies that they use are these low-end frequencies travel longer distances. They do carry less data, but they travel longer distances and they penetrate into your van better. Uh, they'll go through walls better. Um, so someone that's got lots of low-end frequency is good for, 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 for out in remote areas because it will travel further and you will get a connection. It won't be as fast as if you were in town. Um, similarly, this end, loads of data. That's, that's where 5G tends to be. Um, lots and lots of data, lots of really fast speeds, but travels a very short distance. So you've got to be pretty close to the antenna to get to, to, to be able to use it. You can see they've all got a pretty good spread, um, but... There is some differences between them, so it's, it's worth trying them all out. After we've talked about coverage, cost is, is generally the next question, isn't it? Um, I'm not going to say any is cheaper than the other, because if you shop around, you can get them all to about the same price. Um, what I would say is look at the MVNOs more than the actual mobile operators themselves. Um, so if this is a, an example of so threes unlimited contract, I know you can get it on special quite often, but their, their actual price is £28 a month. The same unlimited is £20 through Smarty, which uses three network. 
and it's actually owned by three. It's just their budget brand. Um, and they're both um, unlimited. They don't not throttle. They're not restricted. Um, they, you do, you know, one of the advantages of Swedes, you can switch it on and off so you can use it for a month and then not use it for three months and then put it back on again. So if, if you're traveling irregularly, that's quite useful. What networks are people using? Hands up for Vodafone? Yeah. Uh, EE? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you find it? Good, yeah. Three, so, so I'm a three, yeah. And any O2? No, a one, yeah. We do, we do gift gaff, yeah. So we have a, we actually have three. So, um, and I, again, I think I might cover this later, so <laughs> bear with me when we get there. Uh, we have three in our Wi Fi's, um, and we have um, Voxy, Vodafone on our phones. And I have a backup O2 gift calf card with a bit of credit on it, just in case we can't get the other two. And we'll whack that in if we have to. And the advantage of the gift gift calf is their credit lasts forever. Um, so if you're not using it, it doesn't run out. So, so it just sits there. And when we need it, we'll whack it in. Um, okay, so that's the networks. We picked our network. The next thing is the tower that we're connecting to, surprisingly enough. They're not all the same. So you pick your network, you, you're now connecting to a tower. Um, I'm going to zoom in on these so they'll make it a bit easier for you, hopefully. Okay. So these two towers here, they're both on band three. Um, they're both on the three network. So say we approached, we're going to park here by this little bend in the road here. We've driven in this way. Chances are, if our router's on, it'll connect into this antenna here, and we'll park there. You'll still get a signal from that antenna, so it'll keep holding a bit. Um, if we look at where that antenna is actually sending its signal, so you might not see as much, but there's a focused area that way and a focused area that way. And where we're parked actually isn't in the distribution area of that antenna because it's in that one. So that's our bend in the road there, and the focus of that antenna comes there. So we will get a better signal and therefore more than likely better speed if we were connected to that antenna rather than this one. Um, so yeah, and, and in some of these devices, so, so the, the simpler ones, you would never know. The, o the only way, and it's one of our top tips later, is whenever you get anywhere, switch your router off or switch your Wi-Fi off, switch your phone off and switch it back on again, because then it'll try and connect to the, to, to the nearest tower or the, or the, or the, um, the strongest signal tower. Okay, bands is the next question. So on each tower, so again, these are all three, three, three network towers. Uh, this one's got bands three and 20. This one's got bands one and three. This one's got bands one, three, and 20. Um, something we'll talk about in a bit is carrier aggregation, which, will, which some of the more advanced routers have, which allow you to connect to multiple bands at the same time and aggregate the speed from them. Um, so if, if I was looking at this and thinking, where am I going to park, where I'm going to work tomorrow, it's going to be right next to this tower that's got 1, 3 and 20, because I'm going to aggregate all those three bands together and I'm going to be flying, uh, rather than being out by, um, actually I haven't got one with one band here, but on the last one, where they only had one band tower. So can you actually see the information you're showing from the focus of the band? Um, so cellmapper.co.uk, I think it's called, will show you, it'll show you where you are, it'll show you the, right, the, the, the towers that you're near and what bands they're on. You just select what network you're on and it'll show you. Um, these devices will show you what bands are available and then you can pick from them. Um, and you'll see that. Um, this weekend is a great example of cell congestion. <laughs> the towers round here are sized for Stratford upon Avon, not for how many thousands of people are here with a phone in every pocket and a, a, a Wi-Fi in every van. Um, the locals must hate us whenever, whenever we descend on here or whenever there's racing on, it can't be dissimilar. Uh, but yeah, as soon as you add more people into a cell, it goes right down and the performance of the tower just uh, it is massively affected. So you can be in the same place at the same, on, the, on two different days and have you know, 10 times slower internet connection. Uh, if anyone was here Wednesday night, performance would have been really high and then Thursday probably dropped as more people came Friday today it's pretty non-existent I was running some tests earlier and it's really low on some of the bands and the only way to get away from that is stay away from other people <laughs> um, modems um, 
I'm going to call it a modem. It isn't actually called a modem anymore because a modem took analog and turned it into digital. Everything is digital now, but everyone seems to refer to them still as modems. But it's basically what receives the signal from the tower and sends your signal back to the tower. We're going to repeat ourselves a little bit here. So different, mo different modems within different devices have the different bands and, and can use different bands. So if we look at... Um, go back... So that device and that device, We've got a Cat4 router, and we'll talk about categories in a bit. That can only connect to those bands, uh, and that one, which is a bit more advanced, the Cat6, can connect to all of those bands. So what you do need to be careful of um, is the um, the branded MiFi's. So if it's a three MiFi or a Vo or Vodafone MiFi, they will be limited to the bands that we saw earlier that are for that network. Uh, it doesn't mean they won't work at all on any of the others. If, if it's unlocked and able to put the SIM in, it just won't work as well um, because you'll be missing out some of the bands that that other network could provide. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you're looking to switch networks at all, go for a buy it from a manufacturer rather than from a network. Um. Category. So we, we talked there about category 4 and category 6. You've probably heard about category 12, 18 and 22. They're the common ones. Um, basically, what that means is how modern the, the, the modem in the router is. Um, so we've got, what have we got? We've got here 4, 6, uh, a 12, and a 18. Um, and what it basically means is how many bands it can connect to simultaneously is, is a simple answer. 22 only comes in with 5G. Um, but if we look at that one, so that category 4 can only connect to band 20 or band 3 or band 1 if it's available. Whereas this category 6 can connect to 20 and 3 or 3 and 1 or 1 and 20 and aggregate those two signals together at the same time. Yeah. Now that's great when you've got all three bands there or two bands there to aggregate together. Um, but if you've only got one band there, they are going to perform exactly the same. So you know, even this 22 that isn't here, but this category 18 will perform exactly the same as that if there's only one band available. Um, and, and, and that, that could be a shock <laughs> when you when you spend the amount of money on a, on a category 22 router. But if you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's only one band in, and you go, why is this 50 pound one as good as this 300 400 pound one? Um, and that's generally why. Antennas, so everything has an antenna, or, or more, more than one antenna. Um, they can be internal or external. Um, I, I wish I had the home router with me, which I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> it's in a box somewhere. Um, but the ones that you get from three, or you know, they're physically bigger. They're designed to fit on your windowsill. They will have a much bigger internal antenna than something like that, so they will perform, tend to perform better. Um, you will also have external antennas, so. With these ones, you can see there's really little, it's what are called TS9 connectors on those, um, and if you get some comparable. Um, this is a Category 4 industrial router, so you've got two SMAs there for the, uh, um, for the external antennas on that. These don't actually have internal antennas at all. They, they, they only work with external. See a few antennas there. Measured in gain, do be really careful when you're looking particularly at Chinese import um, antennas. They are... Um, artistic, let's say, with their gain measurements. Um, if you're looking at pointing or panorama or anything like that, you will, you'll be able to access their independent tests and they will be honest about their gain. Um, the only thing to be prepared with, and this is how some manufacturers get away, they'll say it's uh, a nine gain antenna, nine decibel gain antenna. Um, but that will only be able to be. So if we look at, this is uh, for that one pointing foot. Um, you've got gain here, so at 600 to 900 megahertz, it's actually got no gain at all, so it doesn't actually increase the signal. You're generally getting a bit the benefit of it not being in the inside your band. So it's still, it's still a benefit at zero, because the signal's easier to get to, you can make it higher. But if we go down to the top end, 3000 to 4000 megahertz, 6 decibels of gain is quite a lot. Um, so the higher bands, which if you remember the weaker ones, so you probably what you want the more gain on, that's what you want to see in an antenna. You want, you, you want it to be higher gain at a higher frequency. 
Um, what have we got after that? Again, directionality. So someone, I haven't got a directional antenna here because you move all the time. So you don't want to have to point it in a direction. Similarly, with, when you've got multiple towers around you, and if you want to connect to two different bands or different ones, you don't want to have to point your antenna at it. For some people, it can work, but they tend to be static locations. So if you want one in your house, if you want to use 4G or 5G in your house, a directional antenna will be better. Omnidirectional antennas, which, which all of these are, uh, are, are much better if you're moving around. Um, not every omnidirectional antenna is as good as another. Um, I hate to keep saying the Chinese, but it's not, not always. So simple antennas like this are, are naturally omnidirectional, but depending on the ground plane that it's on, so if it's at the back of your van, it will reflect in one direction. So you want, if, you're, if you're putting something like that in the middle of your you want it in the middle, because that's what makes it omnidirectional. These are ground planeless, so they, are, they can go anywhere and they will always be omnidirectional. Um, this one, I do have one of these on my van, so a, a 40 pound maybe antenna, it's Chinese, um, it's very good for the price, it's the, not as good as something like that, but it performs quite well. It's not truly omnidirectional, it's the only downside of it, so having tested it myself, um, you, you, you can't get any data like this um, from, uh, from, from, from the manufacturers that, that come across to us but this is for the hook again and at every frequency you can see how it's been tested to see how, om how omnidirectional it is. Um, the, um, this one has lobes if you like where it's got dull spots and it, and, and it won't connect in sometimes but, but it's okay, it's still, it's still good. For, for the price it's very good. Cable, depending on the expense of your antenna, tends to dictate how good the cabling is too. So if you, you come and have a look later, but you can see it's £10, £50-ish, £130. And the antenna's better, the cable's better, and you lose less of the signal. Things to be careful of is really long cables. The longer the cable, the more you'll lose down it, hence why these tend to have shorter um, cables on them. It is, yeah. Yeah, because even though it's digital, it still gathers interference, it still reduces it, and then the modem at the other end has to filter out that interference which affects how, how much it can do. Um, so yeah, thicker the cable the better, generally. Um, similar on connectors, the, the TS9 connectors that I talked about here, you, you'll get more loss out of these than you will out of these. Um, they also tend to vibrate loose which isn't great and they're very easy to break. Um, I much prefer SMA that screws on nice and firm. Um, and if you wanted to connect um, I haven't got any actually, but if you want, yeah, if you wanted to connect an expensive or more expensive antenna with SMA connections to one of these, you'd have to use something like that between the two, which introduces loss. As soon as you start putting connections between things to get into there, um, it will reduce the signal that actually gets there. So you, you could be making it worse than not having the antenna at all if you have a cheap antenna, a cheap connector into a, a cheap device. MIMO, okay. This is the carrier aggregation that, that I mentioned earlier, multiplying, putting those bands together. This is where it gets complicated, a little bit weird. Um, this is the device I have forgotten to bring. Uh, <laughs> so this is a, a three hub. I think they call it the 4G Plus hub. Uh, it's, it's designed to sit on your, on your uh, windowsill at home. Um, and but it does have external antenna connectors, but it's only got two. And to do band carry, carrier aggregation at the level that it can do carrier aggregation at, it needs uh, four antennas. So if you can see there, it's got four antennas in there. So when it can get signals to all of those, it, it performs fantastically and it, it genuinely is really good. And if you go on the, on the website, there's some tests on it, it is really, really good. Put it in a van, even with an external antenna, and it will only receive one set of bands to that external antenna. The ones that are inside the van are going to struggle because it's in a metal box, basically, so the signals can't get through. Um, what that means, I'll zoom in on that one so you can actually see it. So all the antennas are inside. 16, we'll just look at down, it's the easiest. 16 megabits per second down. With the antenna outside, it gets better, 20 megabits per second. But actually, with the whole unit just outside, without an external antenna, 36. So in, in that case, you're better off not having an external antenna, but just sticking the unit on your roof. And, and don't be afraid to do that. We, 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 um... So in a roof box, I, you know, when I used the hotspot off my phone, my phone went in a box on the roof. 
do have something coming through one of your windows to remind you to take it down. I have two subscribers that didn't follow that advice and now have their phones somewhere on the M4 scattered and bit. Um, but yes, the, the, the waterproof box with your phone in or even with, a, you know, this Wi-Fi doesn't have external antennas. Whack in the box, put it in a Tupperware box. You, you'll make a, a big difference to, to what signal you can get. Okay. Um. Configuration. So this, this is what I talked about earlier about if you want to play. Um, we've talked a lot about bands. This is where you kind of see it in action. Um, in this example, we're connected to that antenna, which is 1, 3, and 20 band. We're on Smarty, as you can see. Um, it's set to auto, so that, so that is operating. I think it's on this one that I'm doing it on. Um, so it's exactly the same um, as these would do if it's on auto, really. It would just try and guess what the right thing to connect to is. Uh, it's currently connected to band 3, if I remember correctly. I missed that bit. But, and we're getting 1 megabit per second, so we might just be able to stream Netflix in low quality. Um, with the configuration switched into advanced mode, I can go in and say, right, I don't want it to connect to band three, I want it to connect to band one. Um, reboot the mode now, it's now connected to band one, exactly the same location, and we're getting eight megabits per second. Um, it's probably to do with congestion. There's probably lots of devices connected on, to, on band one. Yeah, uh, sorry, on band three, and, and less on band one. Uh, I'm going to try band 20, just on the off chance, um, and better than band three, which it had guessed at, uh, but not as good as band one. So in that case, I'd be sticking to band one <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and using as much, uh, as much download as I could. Um, but yeah, so that, that's where the advantage of being able to play comes in. Uh, and, and uh, it's not that you need to know what you're doing. It, it's quite simple once you're in there, once you get used to it, and it just becomes part of your setup. When you, when you sit somewhere, you go, right, what's the best connection I've got here? And, and especially if you're looking to work. Um, router, very similar. So we've got our internet signal from the network, from the tower, into the device via the pseudo modem. Um, and then we're then sending it out to our devices. Um, if you're only using one device, it's irrelevant. All that data is going straight to that one device, so that's fine. Um, but if you're anything like us, it's not one device. So it's three phones, three an iPad, two, three iPads, a laptop, CCTV cameras on the, on the van, the Android head unit, um, anything else, Fire Stick. That might be about it. So probably up to 10 or so devices there. Um, and the router decides where which data goes where, basically. So, and, and with ones where you can't tell it what to do, it will just send it equally. So if Toby, as he is now, is sat watching Netflix, uh, probably connected to this, um, then, and I'm trying to do a Zoom call, it will fight over who's going to get it. And there's no preferencing there at all. Um, Wi-Fi bands, being able to change those is also advantageous. Uh, you can see there's similarly congestion on, on the Wi-Fi bands and with, with the channels. With most, you can't change it. The, the cheaper ones, you, you just switch it on and you connect and you don't have any choice. Um, some of the more advanced days, and definitely on, on your Nighthawk, you'd, you'd be able to tell it what Wi-Fi channel to use. Um, so just looking on here, you can see you know, we've got down here less people using it. So you're going to get less interference. Um, with, the, with the automatic ones, they're pretty good at finding a free channel and, and using it. Problem is, when someone comes and parks next to you using the same channel, um, they start interfering. And it's not stealing your bandwidth, it's just making it harder for it to get the signal to you, so you're losing something in it. A, a, a wired LAN, so um, the Ethernet sockets on these, um, and generally the, the, the three hub has it, and, and most of the home Wi-Fi hubs do. Um, take away that. You know, you don't need to worry about Wi-Fi. So if I'm using a laptop, I, I will prefer to, to wire it if I'm in the van. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but it's, it's and, and I don't need to worry about the Wi-Fi connection at all then. It's straight out of the router, straight into the, uh, into the laptop. Configuration, this is where Toby can suffer a little bit. Um, with, with these ones where I can configure the Wi-Fi. So in, in our van, we have um, four hotspots all off the same device. Um, main, guest, kids, and work and I can prioritize those. So work is priority one. 
So it means that if Toby starts watching Netflix and the bandwidth isn't there, it doesn't cut off my Zoom call. It'll stop him watching Netflix. Um, so yeah, it, it just gives you that added benefit if you've got lots of people doing it to say, right, these are the devices that I want to always have a connection if there's bandwidth to do it. And so if, if those go offline, I don't care. That's the boring bit, I think. So you've made it through without falling asleep. Um, talking about the devices then, um, so some of your hotspots, some of you, some of you may, uh, were simple Wi-Fi, can definitely be the best. For, for, for some people, it will always be right. This weekend, for example, I'm hotspotting off my phone because it's 5G. My, 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 uh, my mobile, my, the router in the van isn't 5G. But this is, we've got 5G, it's, very, it's not very often we're near 5G, which is why we don't have a 5G router in the van. But when we are, the best solution is hotspotting off this, because it, it'll easily outperform a 4G router, even at this stage. Um, but 4Gs can be just as good, um, and the reasons why, yeah, boxes, get them on the roof. It's just one device and one data contract, so you're not messing around with two SIMs. That can limit you a little bit when it comes to local ones, when you're going abroad, but in the UK it can save you a fortune. Um, simple setup, hotspot on, it's done. They are really high category modems, surprisingly enough, but the phone manufacturers, you know, all right, they're generally a, you know, an expensive phone, although that one's £130 off uh, AliExpress um, for a 5G phone. It's the cheapest way I could try 5G. So Sparty started giving 5G for their standard price. I'm, I'm not going to miss out on that, so I just went and found the cheapest 5G phone I could. Um, and, and it's really good, actually. Um, I do, yeah. yeah I have a... An, I an iPhone is my normal phone, <laughs> and that is only used as hotspot. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, 5G is much cheaper. Yeah, high category modems. They, they, you know, they want them to perform well. These phones. They, they want them to get hold the connections as well as they can. Um, it's just unfortunate they don't put external antennas on them. they would be making perfect. But yeah, that's the biggest con. You, you can't connect the to external antenna to it. Uh, they're not independent, so Toby would get really annoyed if I was using my phone hotspot and I walked away from the van and he, thought he could, couldn't watch YouTube anymore. Um, small number of Wi-Fi connections, it's, it's, they're not that bad, but 10 to 20 usually is the maximum you can do on a phone. Uh, we do hit that limit occasionally, but not very often. Um, Non-limited configuration, yeah, so, so like these, you, can, you can't tend to pick what towers you're connected to or anything like that, it just connects and uh, you're limited on it. Um, you can't control it from another device, and this is, comes on to the next one really, so where I compare it to a simple MiFi. When it's on the roof, you can't change it. So I can't look at what it's performing, I can't look at, I can't change it to a different, to, um, uh, to, to turn it on to battery save or anything like that, or reboot it. Got to go up, take it down and do it. So there is a, that's where the MiFi's do have a bit of an advantage over it. And charging and battery health, they're not designed to be plugged in all the time. You can absolutely rinse the battery by leaving it plugged in 24 hours a day. Battery, the batteries that are in here hate getting hot, and that's what it's doing when you're plugging it in. So if you want to be able to use it at home, remember to unplug it, let it go flat every so often, and charge it up again. So simple Wi-Fi, very similar to your hotspot, other than um, you needing to have another card to go in it. Um, the advantage is the app, so I, you can see what's going on with it uh, without having to go and get it out of the box. Low cost, portable, you can take it with you, you can put it in your car if you're driving in your car, um, doesn't tie up the phone, again simple to set up and you can control it from an app. Cons, you need that external, another SIM card unless you're going to move it from your phone into it which is a pain in the ass. Um, on the low end models, so this one doesn't have external antennas, but it would go in the box to go on the roof. Um, Again, no limited configuration, again. Um, low category modems, you don't tend to get things this size uh, with more than Cat 6. The Nighthawk is physically bigger, and I think that's Cat 12, if I remember rightly, normally. So, I think there's about three different models, isn't there now, but I think they start at 12. Um, where am I up to? Not only low category. Again, although you would think they would be more designed to be continuously on charge, they're not. So again, you can, you can really damage the batteries in those. The Netgear ones claim to have a power saving function to so the air cards where it 
switches off and allows it to go to halfway and then brings it back up again. But we had an air card and we blasted through the battery of that by leaving it plugged in in no time. Um, so yeah, just be, just be careful. They're, they're, they're designed primarily as portable devices to be run off the battery and then charged up. Right, um, £100 motorhome stickers. This is my bugbear. So I'm glad no one put their hand up when they said they'd got an Avtex or a MaxView or a motorhome Wi-Fi system. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm going to be carefully talk about it since I'm going to put it on the internet at some point. Um, you can go into a shop and buy a motorhome Wi-Fi kit and it's got a router in it and it's got a, an antenna in it. Um, you will see that things are very similar. So the MaxView Roam is one of them. Uh, the Max View Roam X is one of them. The Avtex is one of them. Uh, this one's a Huawei. This one's a Huawei as well from Motorphone Wi-Fi. And the Kuma is a branded Chinese import. There are advantages, potentially. You can walk into a shop and buy a box with everything you need in it. Um, they're good routers. You can't, you can't not like, you know, the, 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 the routers that I would pick for them to use are those. I just don't agree with the price they put on top of it. Um, the support might be better. You're buying your antenna and your routes from the same price. If you have a problem, you can go to them. Um, the cons, um, there's limited variation. So, so it's one router and one antenna. So you can't go, I want to use that router with that antenna. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the good antennas. Yeah, they are good antennas. Yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're, they're good kits. They're just expensive. And more expensive than they need to be. <laughs> um, additional cost on top of buying separately. And the support might not be any better. I know of at least one of those companies that send their customers direct to the manufacturer. So, yeah, it, it may be, it may not be. Um, so, next set of my fine antenna. So, so these with something like this. Um, I wouldn't go over a category four or a category six for what I said, because you're probably better using internal antennas on those for, for anything more than that. Um, but good for, for, for using outside, good if you're, if you're going into the, the wilds a bit more, good to have the option. You know, if you've got no signal somewhere inside the van, plugging in the ante external antennas will, could at least get you one band. Um, Generally low cost, so you can get so on on, on if you go onto the uh, YouTube channel, there's one which uh, where I pair that with the Bing through antennas, less than fifty pounds for for all of that. Um, portable dual use again, simple setup. You can use an external antenna. They are only two by two antennas, so the the low you're using the TS9 connectors, so that's not great. Um, Generally, again, small numbers of Wi-Fi, but not too bothered about that. 10 to 20. I think some might go up to 32 or 35 now. Um, and yeah, just, just the, the low cast antennas, you have got that cable loss. There probably is little benefit in spending 35 pounds on that and 150 pounds on that. You'd probably be better going the other way and spending more on the router and less on the antenna. So this is the one I forgot. Um, these are the, the kind of things that I mean. They are, they're, they're very, they are good routers. They're really, really good routers. Uh, the downside is, the, the biggest downside is they're designed for stationary use. So, so they're not designed for being shaken around physically. Um, but the way their processors work is they're expecting to be in the same location all the time. On your windowsill at home, connects to the best antenna and locks to it. Um, and that's okay if you, when you move to your site, you turn it off and turn it on again. Um, what it's not great for is driving down the road. So, so we use our Wi-Fi um, in the van for listening to internet radio as we're driving. Um, if we're using that, it freaks out every time it drops a tower to switch to the next tower because it's not actually expecting to change all the time because it's expected to be in one place all the time. So it, it does it, it just doesn't do it very well. The portable routers, the industrial routers, do much better. They're constantly looking for the next tower to go, I'm losing that one, I need to find another one, right, go. And, and you don't have that. Ooh, what's happened? Oh, it's back on again. Um, so the, the, but to have in your van, in a station place, they're a good option. You can pick them up for 50 quid or so on eBay. 
uh, you know, people that have, have, have bought into the, the, the contract, had it as a contract, and then changed, and then they're selling them on. They're, good, they're generally good categories, so you're usually talking 12 to 18. They generally have two antenna, external antennas, so you're all like connected to one band with an external antenna. And they're generally SMA connectors, so, so the, the screw on one, so they're, they're good quality. Um, what else have we got on there? <coughs> two by two antennas, we'll talk a little bit more about how we can improve one of these if you do have one or if you do get one. Um, they're not all 12 volts, so watch out for that, but most are, but they are dead on 12 volts. So, so if you're using one, get a 12 volt regulated adapter to plug it in, because if you're charging and it goes up to 14.4, it'll start going, ah! Um, whereas these, and the real cons, uh, anything from nine volts to 30 volts, and they go, yeah, I can take this. Um, and yeah, not designed for, for use on the move, like I said. And, and then industrial routers. In the weaknesses of the others, I've probably covered a lot of what's the positives on these, to be honest, other than the price. They're not, they're, they're not the cheapest by any means, but there's lots of choice. You can pick the right one for you. You can couple it with the right antenna. Fully configurable. That large voltage range is really helpful because you literally just connect it to your battery and you, and you don't need to worry about it. Um, extra functionality on a lot of them, and it, again, it depends how much you want to play. Um, this is mine. This is the one I use in the van. They say it's only a Category 4 router, but I find that is much more stable than one of the, the higher ones. I don't need a Category 18 router because I don't need the speeds it can get. This is, this, but this, this will always hang on to a signal for me, my baby. Um, and it's got extra bits that I can play with. So it's got inputs and outputs. So I can, my, uh, if the alarm goes off in the van, it sends me a text. Um, I can turn on lights from it by connecting them into the outputs on it. And um, if the, we've got Juno, our dog, the temperature in the van gets too hot, it'll send me a message to tell me it's getting too hot in the van. Am I up to extra functionality? Yeah, robust, talked about rally cars. It's the remote access, so I can text, so wherever that is, I can text it and it'll tell me where it is, so it doubles as my tracking device. Um, it can tell me its status, so it'll tell me what it's connected to, how it's connected, what signal strength it's got, um, what else, what voltage the, the battery in the van is. Um, and I can also go online and change it, and, and go in and change it if I want to, um, which you just can't with any of this, but, but it depends where you want to. Um, they are more expensive than the, the consumer models, but cheaper than motorhome specific ones. Don't worry about that specific one. <laughs> um, to get the best out of it, you do need a bit of knowledge, that's all. But they do all do have basic as well. So, so within the menu, you can switch it to basic and it'll, they'll, they'll work as well as, you know, as, as easily as the consumer ones and probably a little bit better in performance. Um, but if you really want to play with it, switch to advanced and it lets you get into all of those settings. Last one then, oh no, it's not, second to last, CPE, um, consumer premise equipment, bizarrely, um, everything in a box, basically, so in here you've got your modem, you've got your router, you've got your antenna, and in a waterproof case, you plug it in, you put it outside, and you don't need to do anything else, that is it, um, and there, this one's about 40 to 50 pounds. It's one of, one of my favourites, actually, to recommend to people. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I think they're called Koo Wi-Fi. Um, but you can also import them, um, and, and you can probably get them for 25 to £30 pounds imported from China. Um, but it's just really simple. Runs off USB, so you just need a long USB cable and plug it in. Um, wipe your SIM card in it. These are more advanced. Um, so this is... Um, these are the antennas, and then they have spaces in them to fit one of these. So this is a 955 one, so the 955 sits in the bottom of that. The advantage of it is you lose all that um, antenna cable loss, because the cables are literally on the modem. So any signal that gets to those antennas gets into the modem. Um, disadvantages um, are that you, it can be difficult to mount. Um, theft risk, you know, I'm not sure I'd want to put that and a £200 box in an antenna on the top of my roof. Um, but Jake people probably wouldn't know what it was. Um, and then they are a bit, but the commercial solutions are a bit more expensive. That one isn't, you know, that, 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 if, you, if you want something that you can just whack your SIM card in and throw outside, that's, I, I really like that. So again, it's only category four, but it's dead simple. Uh, and you don't have to worry about antennas or anything like that. Um, modifications, um, if I had the home and 
Wi-Fi router. I've been able to show you this. Um, they get the standard. They have two antenna connections, like most of these. But there's a company called routermods.co.uk um, that will open them up, disconnect their internal antennas, and put new external antennas. So, so the, the three one I have now has six antenna connections, so I can connect to every band through an antenna external connector. Um, what I forgot to mention on the consumer ones is obviously this. This one's a, a category twelve. And because it's an industrial, it gives you the option to connect external antennas to all of those bands. So um, you just don't get that on those. Uh, so again, it, it, you know, it's a cost, but you can pick up the when we pick up the routers for about fifty quid second hand, between seventy five and hundred pounds to have the uh, modification done. But it's giving you a really good router at the end of the day that you can't get comparing it to a four hundred pound router. Um, it does void, void your warranty if you get it on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, how are we doing? Yeah, so that's pretty much for the 4G stuff, uh, 4G and 5G. I couldn't not mention satellite just because of some of the vans that are here and where they're likely to be going. Um, three options that I've, that I've used and tried. Um, so spotting Garvin in reach. Uh, it, it is satellite. Um, it's not really internet, but it's a good way if you just want to stay in touch. So it's the equivalent of sending a text message. You can send an, an emergency message. It's got global coverage. They do cost about £200 for the unit. I think it's about £20 a month, if I remember rightly. Um, it's, you can, the most you'd be able to do on it is in some of the Garmin in Beach ones is you can update your Facebook status. That, that's the most of the internet that you get because uh, they are very slow. But... They're great if you just always need to be connected for some, you know, to let someone know you're okay or for someone to get hold of you. Um, the next one is Oyster and KUKA band. Um, Oyster used to be huge because it used to be the only way you could get satellite internet. Um, and, and, and what it does is it uses similar to Astra satellites that you get satellite TV through. Um, it's just off to the side, actually, the satellite that it uses. So you can't watch telly while you're using the internet with an Oyster. Um, but it does give you global coverage uh, with the right equipment and the right provider. It does give you full internet access, but it's not very fast. Um, it's um, the advantage it has over Starlink, which I'll talk about in a minute, is it's geostationary satellites, so they don't move. So if you park somewhere and you know there's a gap of sky, and you can, and you, can you know in the rough direction the, the, the satellite will be. Once you're parked, that satellite will not move, and you, you can lock on. You can, there's a gap in the trees. Be connected and, it's, and that's fine. It's not cheap, the service isn't cheap. You do need that line of sight. Um, you can't really use it on the move because you've got to keep going like that. <laughs> um, and uh, the speed isn't fantastic, it's you know, be between maximum of 10 to, to foot and four up. Um, but the global coverage is, is, is great, but it's expensive and it's usually the only option you have um, to be alternative to 4G. Um, Starlink, as I mentioned, um, slightly different way it works. They've just brought out an RV product, which is very good, but very expensive. Um, it's the same thing, it's a dish, it's a router. Um, full coverage in the EU and the US at the moment. Ultimately, it will be global. Very high speeds, it's faster than 5G. Um, so, um, and with the RV subscription, you can service pause. So you can have it for a month, and then you can pause it for 11 months, and have it for a month. It's hundred pound a month, but um, being able to pause it kind of helps. Um, it is expensive, so it's about five hundred pound ish for the gear and hundred pound a month for the subscription. Um, the residential services are prioritised over the RV. Um, doesn't usually have a, an issue, but I have had heard from people in the US where it's been adopted a lot more by residential customers. That if they're in an area where there's lots of residential Starlink users, there speed does go down and I have heard less than five megabits per second, which when you're paying hundred pound a month is good. But just get out of town and it'll get better. And, and it will get better. You know, there's limited satellites up at the moment. Ultimately if Elon gets his way, there'll be a lot more. Um, yeah. Um, where this differs to the previous one with geostationary satellites, these satellites are always moving. So really you want a real expanse of sky. You can't just go, right, I've locked onto that satellite. It doesn't matter if there's trees all around here. You need a good, because it's constantly switching from one satellite to the other. It's a bit like the cell network. So it's, it's got to always have a satellite in view, and ideally more than one. 
to, to get the best speeds. Um, they're not 12 volts at the moment, so 240, um, 45 to 90 watt consumption, so you're running through an inverter. Um, you can't use them in motion, so it's the same deal, although technically they could be. And um, at the moment they say you shouldn't. Uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe that will come in the future and we'll probably charge you a premium for doing it. Um, there's no Ethernet connection as standard, which was a bit of a, an annoyance for me because um, I do like to use Ethernet. But yeah, not having an Ethernet connection, you can get an Ethernet adapter for another, I think it's about 150 quid, which was ridiculous. Um, and the router doesn't have any management on it, so you can't, I couldn't set up individual hotspots like I can with the core on. It's just a really, it's, it's a basic plug and play router. It's a good router, but, but you plug it in and do it. What you could do is you could run out of that router into another router. You know, these will have um, Ethernet in. If I paid for that Ethernet adapter, I could run out of those into one of these and then do my hotspots off that. But then it starts getting really complicated and, and it's a bit too much for a van. Um, ideally, they'll open up the router so that you can control it a bit better and, and, or, or do a a basic and advanced mode would be, I can understand why the vast majority of people just want to plug it in and it work, but it would be nice to be able to play with it a little bit. Uh, Starlink done, we're nearly there. You'll be glad to hear, because I'm probably keeping you from beer now, which is probably not ideal for me. Um, so reiteration of top tips, consider how you're going to use it. Start small. The one thing I have found is um, the second-hand sell-on value of stuff is pretty good. So, so it's a start with something like this, and if it's not working for you, sell it, and then buy something like this. Have multiple options and network. So like I say, um, I wouldn't be without 5G phone and a cat before. That, 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 that's my go-to. I don't, don't need any of that. If I'm in a 5G area, this gives me a fantastic speed. If I'm in the wilds or anywhere else, this gives me enough for what I need. Um, and with a couple, it's, it's coupled with the, the best of the antennas, the Vimo 3 there. Um, but wouldn't be without that. Um, multiple networks, have multiple networks with you. I, I wouldn't be without our being able to switch from three to own phone to two. So have two is what I'd suggest. So have your phone on one and have your Wi Fi on another if you're doing it. Don't, don't have them both together. Reset your route on arrival when you get there, or your phone, switch it off, switch it on again. That, that could be the difference between getting great signals and getting rubbish. Um, if it's configurable, try your different bands, prioritising different devices, because it could well be that someone is just sucking your bandwidth when you're trying to do something. I'm not squeezing anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel. And then you'll get more tips and hints, and as new solutions come out, or when I find a bargain, that's where it goes on. You know, that's, uh, is that it? Discounts and offers. So Solwise are... Um, one of my partners, they are a good company, so any of the Teltonica stuff, any of the pointing stuff, so the Puck and the Mimo, um, there's some cards there with the code on, you can get 10% off, take them, you can also go onto our website and just hit slash codes at the end and it'll give you all of those codes. Smarty do various gift things, so if you use the link in there, um, at one point it was getting second month for free, I think at the moment it's a £10 Amazon gift card, but not to be sneezed at. Same with Voxy, there's a link on there that if you sign up for Voxy, you'll get that. Um, router mods, if you do go down the home room and you fancy having it modified, they'll give you £10 off if you use the code on the website. Um, but yeah, and, and any of those I would recommend. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for coming, because I'm just glad someone was here. <laughs> um, feel free to come up and have a look at anything, grab cards, um, I'll throw out some stickers, I think, as well. After our talk, everyone got the chance to get hands-on with the products that we had with us. So here is a quick virtual rundown of the highlights that they got to see. Where we have done detailed reviews of these, you will find video links along with product links in the video notes. The Poco M3 Pro is our 5G phone that we use as a hotspot. Available for around £150, it is a simple way to utilise 5G, though obviously missing any option for external antennas or configurable options. The Huawei E5576 is a simple Cat4 portable Wi-Fi without antenna connections. It's simple but cheap. The ZTE MF910 is a Category 4 portable Wi-Fi that has TS9 external antenna connections, making it useful where signals aren't as strong. Again, it's simple without the advanced options we spoke about, but it is low cost.
The ZTE MF971V is a Category 6 portable MiFi with antenna connections, giving the added option of being able to carry out aggregate signals where they are available. The Bingfu mag mount antennas are a budget option for an external antenna and coupled with either the MF910 or the MF971V can give a budget friendly no frills solution. The Tianji CPE outdoor Wi-Fi router is another no frills budget Cat4 solution that's very simple to use minimising antenna cable loss by having everything in the box together and it's very simple to set up. The 3 4G Plus hub can give great speeds when used in the right location, but has very limited configuration options. It's designed for stationary use and its carry aggregation is handicapped when using an external antenna as standard. However, with the router mods modification to add additional external antennas, it gives it better potential for carrier aggregation when on external antennas. Remember, you can get £10 off modification of this or any other router by using our discount code. All the following products are available from solwise.co.uk and you can get 10% off the price simply by entering Explore Van at the checkout. The Teltonica RUT241 is the entry level Cat4 router in the range. Like all the following Teltonica routers, it has all the configuration options in expert mode to be able to maximise its potential, but maintaining a basic mode if you just want it to be plug and play. It's designed for mobile use and is built to last, and can be powered from 9 volts to 30 volts. The RUT241 has SMA antenna connections for both mobile and Wi-Fi, and can be used to boost connections to Wi-Fi hotspots, as well as connecting to 3 and 4G. The RUT955 is our current choice of router. It's category 4, but adding the option to install two SIM cards, it can manually or automatically switch from one network to another. It can also connect to Wi-Fi hotspots. It also has GPS tracking, analog and digital inputs and outputs. The TCR100 from Teltonica is their entry-level Category 6 modem, enabling it to benefit from carrier aggregation. It only has a single SIM card, but it still has SMA connectors for external mobile antennas, and all the other configuration options we'd expect from a Teltonica router. The RUTX11 is also Category 6, but also adds that additional SIM card slot to be able to switch between two networks. It also has GPS and SMA connectors for both mobile and Wi-Fi antennas. Approaching the top of the range, the RUT X12 has all of these features, but in addition to two SIM slots, it has two Category 6 modems, meaning not only can it switch between two networks, it can connect two networks at the same time, combining the bandwidth available from both. The RUT X14 is Teltonica's Category 12 router, giving it the potential for up to 600 megabits per second download from just one network. It maintains the two SIM slots, but only having one modem, it switches between the two networks. Unlike consumer routers, it comes as standard with 4x4 MIMO antenna connections, meaning you can benefit from the maximum carrier aggregation potential when using external antennas. The full range of Teltonica routers partner really well with pointing antennas, also available from Solwise. The pointing puck is a low profile model available in configurations to suit the router you choose, with either 2x2 cellular on its own or a combined unit integrating cellular, Wi-Fi and GPS antennas. For even more sensitivity, the pointing MIMO 3 range also gives the option in addition to those of the MIMO 317, which provides connections for 4x4 cellular antenna, Wi-Fi and GPS, perfect for the RUTX12 and RUTX14. You can find all of the Teltonica and pointing products in one place simply by visiting www.saltwise.co.uk slash explorevan. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.